Hello, this is Math 2231 coming to you from the College of DuPage during the summer of 2020. And this is the conclusion of the lecture entitled Properties of the Definite Integral. So here are some properties that you will use in your, uh, in your calculations. And so please make note of these carefully. The definite integral from A to B of f of x dx is the negative of the definite integral from B to A, f of x dx. The point of this is we can interchange the limits on any definite integral. All we need to do is tack a minus sign onto the integral when we do. I do this a lot uh, in my calculations. Number two, the definite integral from a to a of f of x dx is equal to zero. If the upper and lower limits are the same, then there's no work to do. The integral is zero. Another way to interpret it, this is there is no area under a single point. Number three, the definite integral from a to b of c times f of x dx, where c is a constant, is the same thing as c times the integral from a to b of f of x dx, where c is any number. Uh, this means that you can jerk the constant through the integral sign. I will do this 10 times out of 10 to simplify the calculation. And this makes sense because the antiderivative is, uh, or this actually is a limit. And we know that the constant times the limit is uh, the, the constant times, constant time of the limit is the limit of the constants times a function. So because this is a limit, it makes sense. Uh, we can do this term by term because it's the inverse of the derivative process, which we also can do term by term. So we can break up definite integrals across the sum or difference. You can do them term by term. Number five is a little more complicated. The integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to the integral from a to c of f of x dx plus the integral from c to b of f of x dx where c is any number. Now this makes sense when you uh, think about this from an area context if c is between a and b but it's also true whether C is between A and B or not. And it's more important than you might realize because it helps us integrate a function over adjacent intervals. And again, C does not have to be between A and B to do this. Make note of these properties because I'll ask you about these later. And last, um, it really doesn't matter if this is dx or dt or t and x because these are dummy variables. It's just like solving an equation for z and the same equation solving for x. It really didn't matter. It was just a dummy variable. Okay, here's a problem I'd like for you to do. Use the results from the first example. By the way, the first example was where we uh, calculated the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared plus 1 dx. You should look in your notes for that. But use the results from the first example and the properties that we just discussed to evaluate the following. You have three problems to do. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Well, the first one, instead of going from 0 to 2, we're going from 2 to 0, so that had to be minus 14 over 3. And 14 over 3 was what we had for this integral without the minus sign that we computed um, a couple of ways, actually. Okay, uh, maybe only one way. Uh, here, you can factor the 10 out. That's a constant, so you can jerk it through the integral. And then this thing is 14 over 3, so that is 10 times 14 over 3 is 140 over 3. And this last one, it didn't matter whether it was a t, f of t dt, or f of x dx, you still get the same answer. Uh, here's number three. I'm asking you to evaluate the integral from 130 to 130 of this complicated function with trig trigonometric things and polynomials and quotients thereof. Um, you know what to do. Let's see how you did. Well, this has to be zero because there's no area under a single point. Here's number four. Suppose that the integral from 6 to minus 10, f of x dx is 23, and the integral from minus 10 to 6 of g of x dx is equal to minus 9. Determine the value using the properties uh, of the definite integral from minus 
10 to 6 of 2 times f of x minus 10 times g of x dx. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Okay, uh, we're going to break this up into um, term by term. I'm going to pour the 2 and the 10 out. And now we're looking at these. Now, what happens here is this is going in the opposite direction of what we know up here. So that means that I'm going to put, this is going to be 2, but then I'm going to call this minus 23 here for that one. And we know that uh, straight up, uh, this integral was minus 9. So you do the calculation and add the numbers correctly. And you get, uh, let's see, this is a minus times minus is a plus 90 minus 46 is the 44. Here's example 5 for you. You're going to do this in a moment. Uh, so given that I tell you that the um, integral from 12 to minus 10 of f of x dx is 6, the integral from 100 to minus 10 f of x dx is 2, and the integral from 100 to minus 5 f of x dx is 4, I want you to determine the value of the definite integral from minus 5 to 12 of f of x dx. You know what to do. Let's see how you do. Okay, there's the problem we're doing again. So the C in this uh, application uh, is, is um, one of the ones that we're going to do. So the integral from minus 5 to 12 is the integral from minus 5 to 100 plus the integral from 100 to minus 10, plus the integral from minus 10 to 12. So you see you really got two things in between. You've got the one, or not necessarily between, but you've got two c's. You've got this one and you have the minus 10. But now uh, what we're going to do is we know some of these numbers. This is the backwards of um, this one. And so that's going to be minus 4. This is going to be minus 2, and that is going to be minus 6. If you do all that arithmetic, you get negative 12. And again, a definite integral can be negative because uh, the area, the net area is uh, negative. Okay, here's some more properties. Uh, if you're taking the definite integral of uh, from c from a to b of a constant c dx, that's the constant times the length of the interval. This can uh, make your calculation more quickly and it really follows because this is a flat line and that is how long the line is so if I pull this through that's just the integral of 1 from um, a to b so it's c times b minus a where c is any number if f of x is greater than or equal to 0 then the integral of f of x is greater than or equal to 0 if f is bigger than or equal to g then the integral of f of x dx is bigger than or equal to the integral of g of x dx. And if f of x is caught between little m and big M, then the integral of f of x dx is caught between m times b minus a and capital M times b minus a. And the absolute value of the uh, integral from a to b of f of x dx is less than or equal to the integral from a to b of the absolute value of f of x dx. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of uh, interpretations of the definite integral. Uh, first of all, the uh, definite integral is the net area between um, uh, the two uh, endpoints. So you take the positives and the negatives. So it's the net area. Another interpretation in your book, they call this the net change theorem. Uh, but the, this interpretation says if f of x is some quantity, and that means f prime of x is the rate of change of f of x, that goes back to your derivative concept, then the integral from a to b of f prime of x dx is f of b minus f of a. This is the net change in f of x on the interval a to b. Let's do a couple of examples of that. If v is the volume of taken water, then if you integrate from t1 to t2, v prime, the derivative dt, that's v at, two, a, at t2 minus v at t1, that's the net change in volume over that time. It could go up or down. 
Likewise, if S of t, pay particular attention to this, this deals with rectilinear motion. If S of t is a function giving the position of some object, we know the velocity is the derivative of S prime. Therefore, the displacement of the object, the net displacement of the object from t1 to t2 is the integral of the derivative is s of t2 minus s of t1. Now you can go different directions, but that's a net displacement. Uh, so that will give the displacement the difference between where the object started and where it ended up. To get the total distance traveled by an object, we'd have to compute the integral from t1 to t2 of the absolute value of v of t dt. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. God bless you.